Okay, now we have lots of people today. Uh, hi, everybody. Let's let's begin. So uh, I have some logistics, which I'll probably explain at the end regarding the final and stuff. But right now, let me just continue because I stopped at the last lecture at some sort of a weird moment. So let me remind you what we did. Uh, we were studying rooted plane trees. Plane trees. And it's just a, tu a K tuple where K is arbitrary uh, of smaller uh, tuple of smaller rooted plane trees. So it's a recursive definition. And uh, yeah, so an example mm. uh, an example is drawn on the right. So uh, the theorem that we that I was trying to prove, and I almost proved it, but I stopped you know, at the last, you know, eighty percent. So the number of the number of rooted plane trees. By the way, please feel free to turn on your video uh, on n plus one vertices is the Catalan number of CN. And the proof that I was trying to do was to find a bijection between trees, rooted plane trees, and dig paths. So I want to find a bijection, find bijection, which sends t to uh, p of t, where p of t is supposed to be a dig path from 0, 0 to n, comma n. And the way I actually described the map itself, right, uh, it was supposed to, so if you have, you have a tree with k, so where the root is connected to k, different uh, subtrees, then uh, there are two cases. Either, the, either there is more, either it has degree more than one or it has degree one. And those cases are actually handled differently. If k bigger than one, then uh, so if you have several trees, then you kind of split them. You you add an own root to each of them, and you just forget about your root, and you get uh, and you get k different trees, and then you just apply a bijection recursively to those smaller trees. Uh, p of t is P of t one prime, P of well is the concatenation of P of t two prime, etc., all the way up to P of t k prime, where uh, t i prime is t i plus an extra root. Okay. And if you, if you haven't seen this before, I'm reminded of what happened in the last lecture, which may or may not uh, make sense to you right now. But if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And if k is equal to 1, right, then you can't really, then p of t prime, t1 prime is going to be equal to p of t, so you can't really recurse. Your recursion is going to get into an infinite loop. So instead, you just remove the root. So you set you set p of t prime, p of t to be north north step, then p of t prime, and then east step, uh, where t prime is t minus the minus the root. So you. Your tree has a unique has a root which is connected to a unique subtree, so you remove the root, and the, and you get a t, you get t prime. Okay, so I have reminded you the bijection. Do you remember? Is it uh, should I explain more? Okay, David remembers. All right, 
Now let's try to, what I didn't show is that it's a bijection. Right? So I have to, uh, need to show it's a bijection. So the map has to be reversible. And if you give me a dig path P, I'm supposed to convert it back into a tree and show that that tree was unique. And that's actually, um, if you just kind of stop and think about it, if you look at, at if you look at the dig path, you can, well, let's see what happens here. Uh, here, P of T touches the diagonal exactly k minus one times. And here, P of T never touches the diagonal. Because it starts with the north step, then east, east step, and then the rest is already a dig path. So the rest kind of stays Right. If you start with a north step and you end with an east, east step and the rest is a dig path, then it's going to be, it's going to stay above the diagonal, the kind of shift, shifted diagonal. So, so your, your resultant path never touches the original diagonal. And we're going to use that observation to at least to recover K and then to recover the individual trees. So, reverse the procedure. Let's say you're given a dig path, given a dig path P. Uh, so let, let's assume first, uh, assume, assume P never touches the diagonal. Then, uh, then you can you can write p as p as north step, north north step, then p prime, and then east step for some other dick path p prime. So you can you can just set t to be t prime plus an extra root where t prime where t prime corresponds to p prime okay so whenever you see a dig path which never touches the diagonal then you, you remove these two steps and in your tree you create uh, in your tree you create a root and then the rest is just this is t prime, and this black thing is p prime. And finally, uh, finally, if otherwise, otherwise p touches the diagonal k minus one times for some k bigger than one. And then if it touches the diagonal several times, then it's, it's a concatenation of P is a, by the way, I should be scrolling the thing on the left, a concatenation of K paths, of K dig paths, P1, P2, all the way up to PK. So you set T, your tree to be T1, T2, all the way up to Tk, where uh, each, where each, mm, this is bad, where each Ti is computed recursively. from Pi. And again, I'm, I guess I haven't explained this very rigorously, but 
the point is that you have a completely reversible procedure, right? All, all these steps correspond exactly to the steps in the, in the actual bijection. So uh, you can, in other words, you can reconstruct the, the, the tree from the path uniquely, and you can convert a tree uniquely into a path, so you get a bijection. All right, any questions? have lots of people nice okay uh, if there is no questions let me try to because you see it's a weird spot I stopped somewhere over here and but then right now I'm gonna forget about the rooted trees for a while and talk about something that looks similar but is different so let me talk about the binary binary trees binary binary trees and that is probably familiar to those of you who are uh, into computers and computer science so first yeah there is like algorithms for binary search trees or whatever this is going to be somewhat similar so uh, let me first motivate by just uh, let's say you have a list of numbers maybe. let's say you have a permutation I'm gonna I'm gonna try to convert a permutation W in SN into a labeled tree. Into a labeled rooted tree, which I'm gonna denote T of W. And the way I'm gonna do this is let me first try an example. So maybe let me try to write down some uh, okay. 8, 1, 3, 6, 9, 4, 2, 5, 7. Maybe W is in one line notat notation is something like this. And then the way I'm going to convert it into a tree is I'm going to find the maximal element, which is 9 in this case. And I'm going to make 9 a root of my tree. And then W splits into two parts. And the one to the left of 9 and the one to the right of 9. The first part is going to be the left subtree, and the second part is going to be the right subtree. And then I just do it recursively. So uh, for the left for the left subtree, I'm supposed to have 8, 1, 3, 6. For the right subtree, I'm supposed to have 4, 2, 5, 7. So 8 is the largest element here. So I put it as a root. And then everything else is to the right of 8. So there is no, there is going to be no left subtree, but for the right subtree, I'm going to have one, three, six. And here on the right, seven is a root, because it's the largest element. And then four, two, five is going to be uh, the left subtree. And then I just continue. So six is the largest element, everything is to the left. Um, one and three, three and one is to the left. Okay, and here I have 5 is the largest element, everything is to the left, 4 is the largest element, 2 is to the right. Yeah. So, and now I just erase all these extra, all these extra things, and I get a tree. So let me try to write, write down what I just did. And uh, what I just did is write w as some some left sub sub permutation and then n and then some right permutation of some other set uh, in one line notation and then what you do is you set uh, t of w to be the tree such that it has the root that's labeled n and it's connected the root is connected to two subtrees the left subtree and the right subtree and well even let, let me call them t of l and 
T of L and T of R. And these subtrees are computed recursively from L and R. Computed recursively from L and R. So that's the whole description. All these recursive algorithms are very easy, very short to describe, but kind of uh, tricky to do by hand. But anyway, if you if you just uh, you can you can look at the tree and you can actually recover the permutation, right? And let me write this down as a. I guess yeah. Let let me first. I want to def I want to give a definition of the kind of object that I get. I mean, I get some some kind of a rooted tree. But let me try to because my tree is it has the special property that all these every node has a left subtree and a right subtree. So it has unlike rooted plane trees before, which you could the root could have an arbitrary many neighbors. Here, each vertex has at most two neighbors. And one of them is left and one of them is right. Even even when there is one neighbor, you know whether it's left or right. So let me encode this into a definition. And that is going to be called a decreasing, decreasing binary tree. Is a rooted tree T, which is binary and decreasing binary means that it's uh, each vertex has at most two children well it has yeah let, let me write it down uh, it is connected to a left subtree which is possibly empty empty and a right subtree which is also possibly empty okay like for instance here both trees the left and the right are non-empty if you take seven then the left subtree is non-empty the right subtree is empty for two, both of these three, both both of these subtrees are empty, and that's binary. And decreasing is another property satisfied by the tree. I get is that whenever you go down, uh, whenever you look at the children of some vertex, then it's the children have less have labels which are less than the than the parent. That's called decreasing tree label of each vertex is strictly larger than the labels of its children is that clear okay so and then the claim is if you give me some labeled tree like this, then I should be able to recover the permutation uniquely. So, uh, okay, let's say BT of N is the set of all decreasing plane trees uh, on vertex set bracket N, then the theorem or let's say proposition, which is of course essential for your computer science class, is that the number of these binary discrete and binary trees is n factorial. Or in other words, you can you're given some input which is a list of numbers, and then you build some data structure like a tree like this, then you should be able to recover the information about your list from your representation and yeah so in other words uh, the goal is to show that the 
above map, which sends the permutation to a to a decreasing binary tree, is a bijection. And why is that? Well, uh, I mean, so you have a map from W to T of W. It is clear that the result is a decreasing binary tree. Right? Um, clearly, T of W is a decreasing, well, it belongs to the set BT of N for any w in a that's one point. Another point is that conversely, given a tree t in this set, you can, well, let me try to draw some random tree. Uh, it has to be decreasing, nine, eight, six, seven, Three, five, two, one, uh, four. Yeah, something like this. Then, uh, if this is my tree T, then you can one thing you can recover immediately is the position of the of the largest element in the permutation, because that's you know how many elements are to the left of nine and how many elements are to the right of nine in the one line notation of my permutation. So, uh, you can recover the position of N in the one line notation of W and then uh, you can recursively reconstruct the two remaining parts of W from yeah you just look at the two sub trees and then you kind of recursively recover yeah let me try to do this in the example so I have, here's my permutation W here. It's gonna be, it's gonna have, uh, it's gonna have nine in position four. Right. Uh, it's gonna have nine in position four, and then on the left I'm gonna have four, seven, eight, three. And I know that eight is gonna be between, yeah, actually I can just read off this from the, from the tree, because there is no, uh, yeah, and then on the right, six is going to be to the left of everybody else. Six, and then the and then five is going to be in between uh, two and one. Two, five, one. All right, and, and you can you can check that conversely. If I try to build a tree out of W, then nine is going to be the root, and then everything else is going to just completely. Uh, completely correspond to yeah. It's it's easy to see that these two procedures are reverse reverses of one another. Yeah. Any any questions on this? And by the way, the goal of this this is an easy statement, but the goal was to kind of motivate. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take the same trees, but I'm going to forget the labels. Okay. And, that, and that's going to be combinatorially more interesting. So my question to you is going to be, what happens if we forget the labels? And so what, uh, what happens? Well, I need to take this definition and I need to remove the labels out, out of this definition. So uh, let me try to do that. So here is another, uh, I want two definitions to be on this, oh, okay, they're on the same, on the same page. 
Uh, so definition a, I'm going to call them plain binary trees by analogy to rooted plane trees. A plane binary tree is, is basically a, well, okay, it's a rooted tree with unlabeled vertices. And the only thing I have to explain is binary, right? I have just, uh, I have to just copy the notion of binary, which is binary in the sense that uh, each vertex um, is connected to a left and a right subtree which are possibly empty. Right. Or in other words, uh, in other words, it is a just a pair T of T L T R of smaller plane binary trees. Okay. Every vertex has a left subtree and a right subtree, which may be empty. And that's the whole definition. And it's, yeah, so in other words, and I'm going to, so let me try to draw two examples. Um, yeah, maybe something like this. Here is one example of a plain binary tree. Yeah, maybe even add some more vertices. And as usual, we are not gonna, this is not the same as the, if I take, if I just, yeah, maybe I, I even, I can even do this. I can just erase this edge and make it in from a left subtree into a right subtree. Okay. These two are not gonna be the same as uh, not the same as plain binary trees. So what do I mean by the same? Uh, let me write it down like this. Two plain binary trees, T1, well, let's say T, which is equal to T left, T right, and T prime, which is T prime left, T prime right are the same if and only if uh, TL TL is the same as TL prime and TR TR is the same as TR prime. And in this case, uh, the two left subtrees are not the same because their, their left subtrees are not the same because they're, yeah. For, for, this, for this, these two vertices, the left subtree is empty here, but it's not empty here, so they're not the same. Uh, that's the, again, my illustration of applying a recursive definition. So, okay, so how many? Let's count. Uh, we have, we know when two plain binary trees are the same or not the same. So question is, how many plain binary trees? So I have to specify the number of vertices. So let's say the number of vertices is uh, on, on n vertices. For instance, let's say n is equal to one so I have one vertex, and then that means I have one tree, which is just a single vertex. For n equals to two, uh, I have two vertices, so how many trees do I get? Two. 
two. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, th that is correct. So, uh, and, and that's actually important, right? That's different from rooted plane trees. Because for rooted plane trees, there was only one tree. Because uh, we don't care about whether the neighbors are left or right. But here we have, we actually have two trees. Two trees. All right. Uh, what about n equals to three? Again, you can see it's either going to be Fibonacci or Catalan. Okay, five, five. All right, let's see. So, and, and that's actually tricky to draw. Let me try to draw it. Uh, the answer is correct, five. And I have to... Finally, there is this one. Okay. Okay, yeah, the answer is five trees. And it's, yeah, so again, an important distinction is that, let me even write this down, is that these four are same, considered the same as rooted plane trees, but not the same as plane binary trees. Okay, all right, so, and that's another, you're probably already tired of these theorems about Catalan numbers, but yeah, the answer is, uh, the answer is that the number of uh, plain binary trees on n plus one, no, sorry, on n vertices, on n vertices is the Catalan number Cn. Okay, and so you may think, all right, these look very similar to plain, to rooted plane trees, which we just showed is Catalan. So maybe we can bijack one to the other. And the answer is actually that it's not that easy. Because, oh, first of all, if you, let's see, if you, if you look at the original theorem about the uh, rooted plane trees, then you see that the same Catalan number counts trees on a different number of vertices. Here it's n plus one, and here it's n. So somehow you're supposed to add another vertex and then do something to these trees to make them into rooted plane trees. And yeah, if you think about it, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, and actually, the proof that I'm gonna present is not going to be bijective, it's going to be algebraic. Or not even algebraic, but whatever, recursive. Um, so what is the, what is the idea? So let, let me denote this left hand side by P sub n. Um, so the goal is to show, goal is to show that P sub n is equal to Cn, and the, uh, the idea is that we're going to show they satisfy the same recurrence. We'll show that they satisfy same the same recurrence, which for the Catalan numbers, I don't know if you remember the recurrence, we had this recurrence when we computed like the generating function for the Catalan numbers. And it, the recurrence was very natural and nice. Cn plus one was equal to the sum of i from zero to n of Ci times Cn minus i. Okay, uh, that's, the, that's the one for Catalan numbers. And uh, so, for the trees, I'm gonna just do the same. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain why Pn also satisfies this recurrence. So I want to show, want to show that Pn plus one is the sum of i from zero to n of c, sorry, of Pi times Pn minus i. And then by induction, it will follow 
because the, uh, the initial values are, they match correctly. So uh, how do I show that? Well, that, that I can show bijectively. That's actually pretty easy to show. So let uh, t be a plain binary tree on n plus one vertices. So it looks, it has a root and then it has two subtrees, right? TL and TR. T is a pair TL comma TR. So, and I, I want to have some sort of summation by I from zero to N. And the, uh, the well, at this point, it should be pretty clear what I'm gonna do. So let I be the number of vertices in T sub L. Right. Each TL and TR are smaller binary trees. This is on I vertices. This is on N minus I vertices. And I can run from zero up to N. So the, the number of options for TL is PI and for TR is P n minus I, and they are independent. So indeed you get this recurrence. Okay, and that's actually a powerful technique. If you, if you want to show something is a Catalan object, then it's the, sometimes the easiest way to do that is to just find a way to Find find the in, the kind of a, a way to recurse like this. That's not that that can be made in a bijective proof, but uh, the bijection is going to be kind of ugly and recursive. So yeah. Anyways, I uh, and now I'm gonna for the rest of this lecture. What is it? Thirteen minutes. Yeah. Let me try to. Yeah, let me try to tell you something that's. Uh, kind of summarizes the lectures, but also get, tells you something new about all these Catalan objects. So let me first give you a definition of Narayana numbers, which just by definition are, by the way, let me know if you have any questions on, on that proof. Okay, Narayana numbers. So uh, by definition, you can define them by a very simple formula, n of n comma k, just some uh, product of binomial coefficients. One over n times n choose k times n choose k minus one. Which uh, is pretty unexpected that it's divisible by n but it is. So these are integers and they're defined for all k in bracket n. And now, okay, so whatever, some formula. W what about if these are integers, what is the combinatorial interpretation? Let me actually show you, I should have a table. Okay, here's a table. So n of four comma two, is one over four times four choose two times four choose one, so, which is six. And six is here. So you see they are form like a nice triangle of integers that we that we like to study. Okay, so the first the first observation about these numbers is the symmetry. Each row is symmetric. Symmetry. N of n comma k is equal to n of n comma n plus one minus k. And the reason is that, well, what is n of n comma k? Sorry, n of n comma n plus one minus k. 
it's 1 over n. I'm looking at this formula times n choose n plus 1 minus k times n choose n plus 1 minus k minus 1, which uh, 1 over n times uh, I can apply the symmetry of binomial coefficients. So I get n choose k minus 1, and here I'm going to get n choose k. And th so that's the same as n of n comma k. OK, so I have this symmetry. But the more interesting property is that if you, if you look at the row sums, okay, the row sum, the row sum is 1, the row sum is 2, the row sum is 5, this is 14, and etc. So not only are these integers, but together they sum up to Catalan numbers. And that, that thing I'm not going to prove, but it's true. So proposition n of n comma 1 plus n of n comma 2 plus etc plus n of n comma n is equal to the Catalan number. So, uh, okay. So, so the point is that whenever you have something that's counted by Catalan numbers, it is it's supposed to be naturally split into n groups. And okay, so previously we had a lot of a lot of Catalan objects, and I think I have a list. All right, I have a long list of stuff counted by Catalan numbers, and I can actually. At some point before in lecture four, I, ha I, I think I have, yeah, I have lecture four here where I gave, uh, drew all these, a, a whole bunch of Catalan numbers. And let me actually try to, uh, try to go back to lecture four. So we have, whoops. All right. Yeah, so you have all these all these objects. Let me briefly remind you. You have dick paths, which are which you all know. You have standard Yan tableau, which are increasing this way and this way, and the the shape has to be two two by n. There are triangulations of an n plus two gone. Right here are five triangulations. Here is a bigger triangulation, and here are non-crossing matchings. Right, just perfect matchings of the complete graph which can be drawn in non-crossing way in a circle. Here are the non-crossing partitions of bracket n. So you have to you have to sort of split bracket n into disjoint subsets which are which don't cross on a don't cross when drawn on a circle. And yeah, let me erase all that. And there's also these parentheses sequences, which are just all sequences of parentheses, which match, kind of form a valid sequence. And there is, uh, there is a few more objects which we learned recently, right? So 1, 3, 2 avoiding permutations and whatever, and these two different kinds of trees. So all those objects, first of all, uh, it's already as I mentioned, is already kind of deep that uh, these objects here, they have a cyclic symmetry of order n plus 2. You can rotate the n plus 2 gone, and you're going to have the action of a cyclic group of size n plus 2. Here you have the action of a cyclic group of size 2n. You can rotate this circle by one click, and, and here you have the cyclic group of size n. So already, uh, all these symmetries are completely invisible. If you kind of go between these objects, you're going to get diff you're going to see some symmetries, but not the other symmetries. And and also another thing I, I want to say now is that somehow these object all these objects have to be split into n groups. And sometimes it's more.
clear how to split them into n groups, but sometimes it's not, right? They are split into n groups according to these Narayana numbers. So let me finish by explaining how to split at least some objects into n groups. So uh, here is the, a proposition which I'm also not going to prove. Proposition that the Narayana numbers count the following objects. First of all, uh, it's dig paths from 0, 0 to n, n with k peaks. And that I'm actually going to show you using a picture from Wikipedia. So what is a peak? Well, first of all, you draw the dig path, kind of you rotate it by 45 degrees, and then a peak is just uh, it's just a basically a north step followed by an east step. Uh, peak is a north step followed by an east east step. So and and you see that there are six dig paths with two peaks. There are six dig paths with three peaks, and etc. So and and here. Notice that the symmetry is completely non-obvious. The symmetry that, like, why is the number of dig paths with two peaks supposed to be equal to the number of dig paths with three peaks? If you try, like, what's the bijection? It's, it's completely sort of obscure in this interpretation. But uh, in some other interpretations, it's actually very nice. So another interpretation is non non crossing partitions of bracket n partitions into k blocks. So it's it's very natural in some interpretations. One three two avoiding permutations in S n with k minus one descents. And uh, yeah, so so here here's another weird symmetry. Rooted plane trees with k uh, leaves and rooted plane trees with k non leaves. And both of these are on n plus 1 vertices. So this is completely strange, right? Let me try to draw uh, a picture. So yeah, let's say, let's say I take n equal to 3. So I have, uh, so I have five rooted trees on four vertices. One that looks like this, 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 and this. This has one leaf, this has two leaves. Uh, well, all these have two leaves. This has three leaves. But also, uh, yeah, I guess in this case, number of trees with one leaf is equal to number of trees with uh, one non-leaf. And similarly for two, leaves for two leaves and two non-leaves. There is a symmetry which is not clear for rooted plane trees. And finally, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to finish here. Binary plane, binary trees with uh, n vertices and k minus 1 left edges. So, uh, where is the picture? Okay, here is the picture. So, 
So you, here we have uh, two left edges. Here we have one left edge, one left edge, zero left edges, one left edge. And for plain binary trees, it's very easy to see the symmetry, right? You just reflect every tree sort of vertically, and then the number of left edges, uh, every left edge becomes a right edge, and vice versa. So here the symmetry is sort of easy, and but here it's hard. Anyways, what I'm saying is that if you want to come up with a bijection between all these different objects, then the Narayana numbers help you. They kind of tell you that, you know, all left edges here should go to leaves here or something like this. They kind of give you extra information, which you can uh, use to find some nice bijections. Anyways, and okay, I'm out of time. All right, yeah, so let me mention two, two quick things. Uh, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. But uh, while you, you're thinking about your questions, let me mention that first of all, the evaluations are due tomorrow at 8 a.m. So you have about 19 hours to finish those. And the other thing is the final. The final, which is going to be on Tuesday, is going to start at 8 a.m. It's going to have a 24-hour window. And uh, I'm going to send you a detailed email about the further like logistics of this final. And yeah, I guess one thing I'd, I'd like to reiterate is that it's open internet. Open internet, but you must list all sources. So I'd like to encourage everybody to, if you actually read the idea or you kind of copied the solution from the internet, just specify the website. You are not gonna be penalized for that. It's kind of, it's a free pass for using any internet, you, in, internet resource you find. If you don't list the sources and I somehow learn about, some, I don't know, by some accident, learn about that, then I'm obligated to report that. And yeah, even if I like, I mean, despite the fact that I want everybody to succeed as much as possible, uh, I'm, it's kind of illegal for me to not report. This is called plagiarism. So, and that was an issue in the midterm. So uh, yeah, just make sure you don't, don't cheat. The, the rules are already pretty liberal and you just list the sources, that's it. Uh, that's all I want to say. Anyways, uh, stay tuned for an email. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I guess have a nice summer after the finals week. <laughs>